This is a story about frogs, green frogs, leopard frogs, and bullfrogs. And it tells how frogs may interact with the owners of this property, who happen to be my brother and his wife. Now, the backyard is a beautiful garden divided into seven plots so that my sister-in-law can attend each plot one day per week. But in addition to the garden is this nice little pond which they have dug. It's in three levels, one, two, and three feet. And it roughly is, I would say, eight, uh, 10, 12 by 18 feet in dimensions. And around it would be this little walk, boardwalk. And these 18 to 20 frogs on a nice day come out and sit and sun themselves on this boardwalk. Now they'll see my brother coming with his can of worms and they may even come to meet him but they're not afraid of him because they recognize him and they have, it's carried over from year to year. So he will feed them and they really like it and they will even after feeding sometimes follow him to the house. Now what he will do, he'll wash off the worm before he gives it to them because they don't need all the sand and dirt that the little can contains. But he also says that the frogs are quite competitive or jealous maybe is a better word. There may be two frogs and he'll put a worm halfway between them. Neither one may want it but they certainly don't want the other one to have it either. So they will grab it and that's the end of the worm, the poor creature. Now. My, my wife has been telling her grandson, Jonathan, about these frogs, and they happen to be, frogs happen to be one of his most favorite critters in the world, that and turtles, but frogs in that order. So he listens to her, and he kind of looks at her with tongue in cheek, as if Grammy might be stretching it a little bit, but she said, well, we're going to go out there, and we will get some video of this thing happening. So that's what we've done and we're trying to put it together so Jonathan will actually see this and of course it may not be suitable for dinner time viewing because the worms are a little bit condemned to their final uh, demise if you will. But we went out and she got a chance to feed the frogs and watch as they they do their thing, and it's even a little bit scary because she discovered that frogs have teeth. Now, some of these bullfrogs, from the tip of their toes to their nose, may be 15 to 18 inches in length. One of them, Jeremiah, that kind of hangs out in the corner, and he has come up, and she held out a worm, and he actually grabbed the end of her glove. And some of these frogs, she discovered, have teeth grabbed her glove and she lifted him right out of the water but as you will see that this uh, feeding frenzy is rather interesting now one of the problems here that my sister-in-law sometimes sees a great blue heron coming to uh, take a look and see what's in this pond because she does have goldfish in there as well as the the frogs and of course the frogs are almost at this point family so we went out and we watched in nicer weather a little warmer in the high 40s i would say all these frogs or most of them come and sit out on the boards surrounding this pond so she got a chance to feed these and she wanted me to video and make a DVD so her grandson Jonathan Eisenklam could watch and enjoy it. Besides the video, I got some very nice still shots of the frogs. And um, of course it's a lot of fun to do. And he, he, I'm sure, is going to look at this and say, ah, Grammy was telling the truth.
not even exaggerating it, because these frogs had their fun. So we're watching and watching. And you will see my brother walking around here, and my sister-in-law, of course. And we had about three days of staying with them, and we had a tremendous amount of fun. We hadn't seen them for about five years, so we covered a lot of ground, reminiscing, laughing, teasing, reminding each other of how we were when we were young, and how maybe we couldn't stand each other day to day. But that comes with the territory. I think brothers are like that, especially I, as the youngest of five, probably felt it more than the rest of them, because I was smaller and they could pick on me. So I decided I better grow bigger and stronger and taller and whatever. But this was indeed a, a lot of pleasure in watching this. And Carol, she likes frogs. I like frogs. Not the frog legs, but she likes them. And uh, like all critters, great and small, I think we're both pretty much the same, enjoying nature in every way, whether it's birds or frogs or fish or trees, flowers, weeds, whatever. So anyway, she wore gloves some days because after she discovered that the frogs, some frogs do have teeth, she said, well, I better wear a glove. And I know that Jeremiah, the biggest of the bullfrogs in this pond, did come and take a worm, but he took the end of her glove as well, and she actually lifted him right out of the water. So that was another bit of fun for her. So she got her chance to watch the frogs, and it made a very special trip. We enjoyed it. Frogs are interesting. One of the things that I was told, and my sister-in-law Doe and Pat had never seen and wouldn't believe it if they hadn't seen it, actually blackbirds, ordinary sized blackbirds, were walking on this boards, board around the pond, and the bullfrog would jump and grab one and take it underwater and drown it. Twice they saw this. And not only did they drown this bird, but they ate it. Now, the bird was almost as big as a frog, so it was an unbelievable thing that they were watching. And as my sister-in-law said, I would never have believed it had I not seen it with my own eyes. Now, she is very knowledgeable because she has a degree that she got late in life. But she was really tuned in to everything in nature, especially plants and trees and weeds, as well as frogs and birds and insects. But she has had seen this, and she said, had I not seen it myself, somebody could have told me over and over that this has happened, and I may not believe it. So, anyway, this is the fun we are having, and I will quit talking here now to see if we can hear some of the, the sounds surrounding this garden and the pond. So now I will start in again to narrate. Um, I think that the frogs that you're looking at right here, you look at it and it makes you think of, gee, that looks all like a hippo. 
you see hippos in Africa and they sit there, lay there in the water with their head and their big eyes projecting. And we say, man, that is a scary beast. But then you look at some of these bullfrogs and you say, hmm, to a bird or to an insect, it's just also a scary beast. So this is the frog feeding frenzy. We try to say that fast several times, and it gets a little bit tongue-tied. But we had a lot of fun, and we, we planned to do it again in a year or so, because we've got to go back and visit, and Carol's got to check the frogs to make sure that they're still there, and that the heron hasn't got them, or they haven't been cannibalistic and ate each other, so we end up with one giant frog and no more. That kind of thing can happen. I have actually seen frogs in a cannibalistic mode. I one time heard a kind of a squealing, squeaking, and I said, what the heck is that? And it was rather dark, and we're along a beach, and we, my friend and I went up and check this thing out with a flash and there we saw a big bullfrog with another it looked like a big green frog it was halfway down its throat and the green frog wasn't very pleased about this and he was making some sounds now of course we've seen I've seen herons fishing these and I suspect that swans and geese will do the same thing and hawks and large crows raccoons are famous for taking frogs but they are an interesting interesting piece of wildlife and nature here comes a frog carol's got a worm there that she's going to hand off to the frog. Let's see what happens. Here it comes. Pretty soon it'll come closer. Here it goes. Got it. Missed your fingers though. But then the frog sits there and it looks like he's actually winking at her and saying thanks, Carol. I like that. I've seen him do this a couple times. It looks like the same film or video over and over, but it's not. It's actually consecutive acts that this frog is, is uh, performing. I'm trying to advise her that it's not a good idea to fall in because the water is a little bit cold yet, probably in the 50s. My brother, too, I keep reminding him that it's not wise to fall in because we'd have to fish him out like we do the, the frogs if we want to move them out of there. This is located in Elgin, Illinois, for if anybody is wondering where it takes place. There's my sister-in-law, Doe, and my brother, Pat. And of course, here is my wife, Carol, and those little bits of wildlife are the condemned frogs. They don't have, I'm sorry, the condemned worms, the frogs. They are not condemned, but they are certainly being well treated. Here comes the frog again. This looks like a repeat action, but it's not. It's the same frog, 
maybe even a different product, but he's doing pretty much the same thing as we saw earlier. He's going to grab it. Mm, got it. So that is the story of the frogs in the pond. And here we go. We're seeing a face-to-face -face frog right there. And this is all starring the Carol Pat uh, and a bunch of frogs as well as some condemned earthworms and nightcrawlers. But that's it.